Hi guys and gals, it's Joel here from the Remo Nutrients R&D Lab and today we're going to be talking about beneficial bacteria. Now we've had a lot of people come up to us and ask us why we didn't come out with a beneficial bacteria product and the simple answer is it's too easy to make it yourself. We use a worm compost tea in order to harvest our beneficial bacteria which we use in our own home gardens. In this episode I'm going to show you guys how to make an inexpensive worm composter as well I'm going to show you an off the shelf model that I use at home in my own garden. Come with me, I'll show you how it's done. So this is the setup we use at our office. We use these 104 liter totes or 27 and a half gallon totes because they've got these flat lids and they're easily stackable. We've created our bedding out of cocoa core and paper scraps from our printer. This creates an airy medium for the worms to live in so they can move freely throughout it. Now the worms you're going to want to get are red wiggler worms, not night crawlers. Night crawlers will die if they're in a low oxygen environment whereas red wigglers can live even underwater for up to two hours. Now your bottom bin, you're going to want to leave as is. This one's going to be creating any of the liquid that's going to be dripping through the compost uh, trays and it's high in anaerobic bacteria which is actually bad for your plants. All subsequent stacked bins should have holes punched through the bottom so that the worms can travel through the bins. So this container has holes on it as well and I haven't added the worms yet. But this will lie on top of our bottom tray and any and all excess liquid will fall to the bottom. Now food scraps will be added to these bins, more specifically the ones with bedding. Once it gets up to a significant level, we take one of the other trays and simply stack it on top and continue to add bedding and food scraps. As the worms eat up all of the organic matter, they're going to move through the holes to the upper trays. Once this one gets filled, we add a second tray and continue the process. As the food scrap gets eaten, it gets converted into worm castings, which are rich in microbial enzymes. So here's the product I use for harvesting my worm castings. It's uh, called the Worm Factory 360. You can find it online on Amazon or any specialty gardening store. It uh, retails for about $100 to $120 and uh, it allows you to get uh, live worm castings which uh, have all those microbes that you're looking for. Um, you want to keep it in a nice dry location. So I've got it here. It's under my back porch right next to the house. It stays warm during the winter time so things don't freeze. Uh, worms are extremely finicky and if they get pissed off at you, they'll, uh, they'll leave your compost and uh, you have a whole bunch of dead worms around the outside of your uh, compost bin. <laughs> you want to avoid feeding them anything spicy or acidic, so stay away from garlic, onions, uh, I think they're in, they don't like grapes either, and of course anything spicy. So the way this product works, keep some uh, newspaper on the top to keep things uh, moist inside is you fill your bins full of compost. You can see here I've got uh, some compost mixed in with some cocoa core. Let's see if I can pull some worms in here. And then I just uh, I throw some paper scraps in there. It doesn't, it doesn't bother them at all. But uh, they'll eat up all the organic matter inside of these uh, compost bins. And when you fill these up all the way to the top, you add a second tray and you start filling this tray full of compost as well. Now you always want to amend it with a little bit of cocoa core, some dirt soil, or even some uh, paper scraps. I use shredded paper as well. It just helps with the bedding. And they can uh, travel around. They don't like uh, muddy uh, situations, but uh, yep. So once you uh, add the tray into this uh, compost, the worms will move up to the top tray and start eating all the food in this tray. Once this one fills, you throw another one on top of this one and they'll just keep on moving up until the very very bottom tray is just saturated with worm castings.
When it comes time to harvesting your worm castings, this should be what your end product looks like. Now there's going to be some paper scraps and maybe some dead worms in here, but you shouldn't have to worry about that. It all comes out the same. Now you're going to want to find one of these paint filter bags. They're very easy to find at a paint supply store. It costs about $1.69. And you're going to want to put your worm castings into this bag. After you've filled up your bag with your worm castings, you're going to want to zap strap it just to keep these big pieces inside the bag. Next, you're going to want to find a container which is large enough to give you a decent amount of micro microbial tea. Next, to support it, I just simply lean it over the side of the garbage can or whatever container you're using and zap strap it to the side. This is a feature that's useful with garbage cans. Before you fill your container up, you're going to want to consider what will get you maximum reproduction. If you live in an area with chlorinated water, you're going to want to fill up your container a couple days in advance and let it sit to let all the chlorine evaporate off. This is before you add any of your worm castings. If you have access to a reverse osmosis machine, this is ideal because everything will be filtered out uh, beforehand. Then, it's simply a matter of adding a liquid sugar product, either simple syrup, cornstarch, or non-sulfur molasses, and the microbes will do the rest. So this is a small scale worm tea brewer that we're using in our laboratory. It's a 20 gallon garbage can with an aquarium bubbler added to the top. These air lines, which are weighted to the bottom of the tub, have air stones which release a steady stream of small bubbles. Now the worm tea bag has been removed, but as you can see here, there's significant biological activity going on. I've been told that using this method you can multiply your biological enzymes exponentially and get up to a billion in one of these tubs. When used on your plants, these microbes will eat up the nutrients in your soil medium and poop out oxygen, creating an oxygen rich grow medium. If everything's been done correct, your final product should look something like this. Now this solution is rich in microbial life. Its optimum potency is within a week, although it can be stored in a cool dry place away from sunlight for up to one month, although potency will decrease over that time. You can use this at full concentrate or dilute it up to five to one. Now there's a long list of benefits to using worm tea in your garden. You can use it as a foliar spray to uh, prevent bug infestations. You can use it as a soil amendment to oxygenate your soil. It's up to you to decide what the best application is for your garden. Now the techniques we've used today are just the ones that I've used in the past to manufacture my own worm tea. Doesn't mean they're right, doesn't mean they're wrong, but they all revolve around the same principle. If you want to find some more information, it's a simple Google search away and you should be able to find everything you need to get started. This has been Rainbow Nutrients R&D Lab. Thank you for watching.